everybody, this is Caitlin and you are watching Zombie Eats Books. So on Black Friday, as I always do every year, I went on to Book Outlet and purchased some books. They were having a 30% discount off of their already discounted books and I also had some credit to my account. So I ended up getting a few more books than I usually do. I'm really excited about the selection. I think it's um, the best selection I've had in a while and I don't really like doing book hauls anymore just because I feel like I'm talking about things that I don't know about because I haven't read the books yet, but um, I just felt really excited about this group of books, so I thought I would share them with you. So this book reminded me of Margaret Atwood's The Handmaid's Tale and also The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne. Um, it's called When She Woke. It's by Hilary Jordan. I've never read this author before but it is about a woman who ends up having an abortion, I think, and she's convicted of murder. And in this society, when you're convicted of murder, your skin is dyed red somehow to mark you as a murderer. And I think she has to travel somewhere safer for her to live and somewhere less oppressive. Um, so yeah, this sounds really interesting. I'm hoping that it is as good as the books that I'm comparing it to. <laughs> I also found this book called The Lobster Kings by Alexi Zentner, and this is also apparently the author of Touch. I don't know what that book is, Touch, I've never heard of it before, and I've never heard of this book before, but I was really intrigued by it when I researched it because it's about a family on an island and they do lobster fishing. Is it called lobster fishing? I don't know. Um, but they catch lobster, <laughs> how about that? and they um, are sort of the patriarchs and matriarchs of this island. And they are also cursed because the firstborn son of every generation ends up dying. And the matriarch of the family is set to inherit the company or the leadership of the town, something like that. And she has to protect the island from meth dealers from the mainland. And it just seems like one of those family sagas that's going to be really beautiful and I'm really looking forward to it. At least I'm really excited about this one. I'm excited about all of these, of course. But this is called The Blizzard by Vladimir Sorokin and it is translated by Jamie Gambrel. This is a Russian author and this has zombies in it. <laughs> Although the story I don't think is really about zombies, it's about this doctor who finds a cure of some kind for the zombie virus and he's traveling to a town where the people have been afflicted by the zombie virus and instead of it taking just a few hours like it should it ends up taking much much longer and there's a blizzard going on and it becomes sort of this existential journey existential crisis of some kind for this doctor and his companions and it sounds fantastic. I also picked up a book that I have been wanting to read for quite a while, and that is Jay by Howard Jacobson. I've heard that this is experimental fiction, and I love experimental fiction. By the way, if you have any recommendations for me in experimental fiction, please do comment down below and let me know. But this story is about a young woman and a young man, and they come from these two families that have some sort of secret about an event that may or may not have happened. There's something going on with the letter J and a word that starts with the letter J. It's a really bizarre synopsis to tell you the truth on the back here, so I'm not quite sure how to describe it, uh, but I'm looking forward to reading it. This next book I've been avoiding for a while, and that is Did You Ever Have a Family by Bill Clegg. It's something that I think that I will end up really enjoying, but 2017 was a really crappy year for me, and I was avoiding sad books for a while, but screw 2017, I'm going to read whatever the hell I want now. So this is about a woman who ends up losing her entire family, and she goes on this journey with her grief trying to deal with what's happened and I think she ends up meeting all of these people that had connections to all the different members of her family and it just sounds really beautiful and moving and 
I think I'm ready to read books like this again. <laughs> so I also found some Leo Tolstoy, um, The Cossacks, The Cossacks, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, and Haji Marat. I don't know what these stories about, as beautiful as these um, Penguin Classics pocket editions are, they're not very informative, so if you know what this is about, let me know. I have read Anna Karenina, and I've been wanting to read War and Peace for quite a while, but that is such a large book and I'm really gonna have to dedicate myself to it, so maybe something shorter like this is a good um, selection to read in the meantime. I picked up the first book of a crime series, Birdman by Mo Hader. This is a crime series that takes place in Southeast London, and it's about a group of girls who have been murdered and sexually assaulted and a detective who has to figure out what's been going on and who's been doing this. And I'm really excited about this because I've heard really great things about Mo Hader and I was also really excited to find that Mo Hader is actually a woman. I thought that it was a man who had written these books. So um, when I saw her picture on the back, I was extra excited. So this next book is by Christopher Isherwood and it is actually nonfiction. It's called Kathleen and Frank, The Autobiography of a Family. It is about Christopher Isherwood's own parents. Um, Kathleen and Frank um, get married early 1900s and then Frank ends up dying uh, like 15 years later, something along those lines. And the book is basically a collection of her letters and her writings and then after each one Christopher Isherwood adds something a reflection of some kind to the end of her letter so this sounds really fascinating and there are a lot of things that are going on politically historically in the time period that it takes place so I'm really excited about this one I picked up another nonfiction, and that is Not Just Jane by Shelley DeWeese. This is really interesting. It's about seven women writers in the 18th and 19th century who are generally overlooked and why their fiction is important today. And I'm so excited to get into this and find out exactly what sort of fiction each of these women wrote and um, getting my hands on that fiction. As this author points out, I've read Jane Austen, I've read the Bronte sisters, but I haven't read any of these women. And just to give you an idea, Mary Elizabeth Braddon, Helen Maria Williams, Charlotte Turner Smith, Sarah Coleridge, Catherine Crow, Dinah Mullet Crake, and Mary Robinson are the writers that she talks about in this novel and what it was like to be a writer during their time periods. This sounds really, really good. This book I've had my eye on for quite a while, and that is XO Orpheus, 50 New Myths, and this is edited by Kate Bernheimer. So I love mythology. Both of my daughters are named after mythological figures, and this book is a collection of authors who have picked their favorite myth, world myth. It doesn't have to be a particular um, myth from any particular um, part of the world. They can pick any myth and rewrite it in their own style and it sounds fantastic and a great way to discover some new authors. I found some old school sci-fi that I've been wanting to read for a while and that is The Martian Chronicles by Ray Bradbury. I've read Fahrenheit 451 and enjoyed it. I didn't love it. Um, but I have been wanting to read more of his work. This is a collection of chronological connected stories. I'm assuming that it takes place on Mars or colonizing Mars, um, something along those lines. It's not very big. I was expecting it to be a bigger book, but it's actually quite short, so I might be getting to it sooner rather than later. So this next book I've heard a lot about on booktube, it's called If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. So this is about a group of students and a murder and sort of a backwards unraveling of what led up to the murder. All of the students, the group of students are um, Shakespearean actors, I think, and something ends up going wrong. And this detective who worked the case years later as the person that was convicted of the murder gets out of prison, he confronts him to find out exactly what happened. And this person that's been convicted of the crime is finally ready to tell the truth. And sounds really good. So this next book is called The Solitude of Prime Numbers by Paul 
Paolo Giordano, and this is an Italian author. I looked for a translator inside the flap here, and I couldn't find one. I don't know if that means that he wrote the book in English, um, or they just forgot to include the translator, which doesn't seem very likely. Anyways, this is about a t couple, a young couple, um, a man and a woman who the author considers to be like prime numbers, meaning that they will probably always be alone and that they don't fit with other numbers and or with other people. And so these teenagers meet and then later on they meet as adults and the question is, is it within their nature to be together or will they always be separate? Last but not least, I also found The Golden Notebook by Doris Lessing, which I'm really excited about. Doris Lessing is an author I've been wanting to read for a really long time, but I've just never picked up any of her works. This is about a young woman in the 50s and 60s, or maybe an older woman, I don't really know. That's the trouble with book hauls, is you don't really know um, what you're talking about. Um, but it's about a woman who has different diaries that reflect different aspects of her life. And the golden notebook is the notebook that brings all of her different notebooks together and helps her through some emotional or psychological hardships, something along those lines. Um, it sounds really fascinating and it's a bit thicker than I expected, um, but I'm looking forward to delving into this author's work. So that's everything that I picked up at Book Outlet, as if that wasn't enough. Um, I certainly have a lot of reading to do. Let me know if you've read any of these. Let me know if you picked up anything over Black Friday or picked up anything recently at all. Um, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.